good afternoon, everybody. My name is Donna Fiesel, and I'm your host of Afternoon Drive Home on IC Radio. In the town of Geraldine, Alabama, your source for news and entertainment. You can also find us on television a couple different ways. You can go to Channel 182, North Alabama. That's Charter Communications. You can also find us on Abundant TV Worldwide, found on Roku, Apple TV, and Amazon Fire. We appreciate you listening to us every day, Monday through Friday, beginning at 1 o'clock with The Edge with Donna and Kathy, and then right after that, afternoon drive home. We have several segments we've been talking about living off the land. And so the very first one that we saw was actually getting started living off the land, which is a good segment. You need to go back there and take a look at that one again. All kinds of great, great ideas on how to get started living off the land. You know, something you can also make money from the land. So we're going to be talking about that for just a few minutes. So we definitely appreciate you listening to us again every day as we try to find some topics that you want us to talk about. We're going to do that. First of all, let's start with the animals. Okay, everybody, if you have to be an animal lover, okay, to live off the land. Now, I kind of looked out. I'm busy with the station, busy with the show, busy doing all kinds of different things. So a cousin and I worked out a deal where he, li he actually rents off part of the 38 acres and he puts his cattle on it. A couple of great things for me. It's a win-win situation for both of us. You might want to check that out if you own some land. Mainly what I want it for is having gardening. And so, again, I can use a manure for the cows and <laughs> use that in the garden as well. So, again, you know, find something that fits for you. Okay, now, if you would like to get started with animals, I've got some ideas for you right here. First of all, meat goats uh, for 4-H progress. Uh, projects. If you rent, if you rent and raise goats, and you love helping kids, you can sell your best goat kids for 4-H projects. And you, if you're living in a rural area like we are, we're in DeKalb County, Alabama. I forgot how many schools we have here, but we are very active in outside and farming and 4-H. So this is a really good place to get started. A good price um, to start at is whatever the market price is in your area so you need to check that out first okay a lot of folks will um, also sell off their baby goats and it's just a big deal around here um, also in addition market price helps you establish that the customer base and what you need to succeed you can also sell young goat kids off the farm for meat if you have interested customers a lot of people use the goat's milk in making cheese and um, also goat's milk is really good in making soaps so there's, there's definitely a market out there for goats um, meat goats for commercial use you can sell the kids or the adult goats for custom grazing they will eat everything make sure you got a good fence now to keep them up in so huge market just keeps growing and has expanded into actually cities that you can go into it's a great business because it gets those goats off of your feed bill as well the company or the person pays you and then you just have them graze the area, kind of like my cousin and what he's doing out here. Um, meat chickens. Cornish cross broilers are hardy meat birds that can be finished in uh, just about eight weeks. So you're looking for quick turnaround there. In addition, laying chickens, that's what we've got. We like the eggs. You can sell the eggs from the laying hens. Just check out for egg prices in your area. Definitely do that. And also chicks. Um, you know you can buy an incubator and um, so we've done that and you can actually have some little chicks coming in so hatch some chicks in the springs to sell for laying hens or for meat and if you're hatching them yourself you'll need an incubator plus a jump start pen for when they are hatched and so my experience in doing that you got to make sure the humidity is good in those incubators and um, you get what you pay for too you remember that as well you might want to talk to some chicken breeders and find out what they use and whatever they're using, the but the humidity is a is a big big issue there. Okay, dairy goats for milk products. Delicious calcium rich milk from dairy coats is definitely in high demand. And also, like I mentioned before, so is goat milk soaps and lotions. So think about a goat, absolutely. Okay, also mini cattle is all the rage right now. So you can raise your own beef. Um, and or milk products. Again, we're talking about how to make money off the land. And that's important too. You know, having a, a hobby is really good, but how to actually make an income out of it starts with some basics, and we're getting to that right now. Um, now, wool or sheep hair, raise some sheep if you want to shear them for wool. 
Um, a lot of folks have alpacas and stuff out there too. You can also sell the wool or knit cool projects with it or you might be interested in hair sheep for meat. Um, beekeeping, we do that here on the farm. This could be a great way to have fresh honey and it is the best, absolutely. And also you want local honey because you get allergies and it, it really does work. Um, <clears throat> you can also make honey products to sell. I sold some of my, um, and, and I was a little, I didn't know what to, to do. You know, you, you want to make a profit, but then you don't want to scare people off with prices that are too high either. So what I did, I'm a, a member, Phil and I are a member of some of the local uh, meat, uh, meetup areas uh, for beekeeping. And so I found out what everybody else was charging for a pint, and that's what I'm charging for a pint. And another thing you don't want to do is butcher the price, you know, because folks have to make a living at this. And if you start lowballing it, you're going to run out of your stuff real quick. And all that hard work that you've done is going to be basically for nothing. And then they're going to go back and start paying the regular price to folks who are dependable. Okay, uh, let's see. Um, fish. If you don't have a pond, you can establish freshwater fish in tanks. we got a big old pond out there, so that's, that's what we do as well. Dogs. He doesn't love a dog. Absolutely. You can pick a breed and raise them from puppies. I know a lot of folks around here who breed all kinds of dogs, and the income is really, really good on that. Now, there are a few documents and a few things to, to keep yourself legit, so you'll need to make sure you check into that as well. Okay, now this is one of mine right here, creating a business from hobbies in the garden. I love doing this. You can start transplants in your house and then sell them right before planting time. Um, or you can collect heirloom seeds at the end of the season, package them, and sell them. Um, now make sure that you try it out for a year or two just to make sure you're doing the right thing when you're harvesting your own seeds. I found the magic, and we'll be talking about this some on the show as well. Because I'm going to tell you what, you can have all the gold in the world, but when it comes down to, you know, you can't find supplies, you can't find, you can't meet the demand, the person who's got the seeds is the one that's going to be making some income, okay? Um, you can also grow herbs in your garden, and then you can harvest and dry and sell those. There's nothing like having your own fresh herbs. There's something good about that. Um, my favorite, and you know, everybody's going to have a favorite, my favorite is chives, because I put chives in everything. So here's, I found a quick way to do this. What I had been doing is cutting those chives up in little pieces and putting them into the hydrator. If you're going ahead and wash them, make sure they're dried off really well. Give them a day or two for drying them on a towel. Put those in your dehydrator. Don't cut them yet. Put the whole thing in there. And then when they've been dried for about 24 hours, you can take them out and just mash them with your fingers. Cuts a lot of time out of there. So that's just an easy way to do herbs. Um, sell fresh produce directly from your home or at a local farmer's market. Now, if you are living in town, you might want to make sure you check with the city and make sure that it's okay to do these things, okay? Another thing you can do is harvest your berries. And you can make some really good jellies to sell. You need to make sure you check codes on that as well. Just make sure that you're doing everything the way it should be. Okay, um, pro provide a you pick service. Did this when we were living in Charlotte, North Carolina. There was a place, um, actually it was close to where Brad and Larissa were living in Raleigh. And it was a strawberry farm. So you could go out there and pick your own strawberries. And it was kind of a fun project to do too. So you can pick your own strawberries, and there you go. Pick them, have them ready for your own strawberry jam. Just use somebody else's farm for it. And the way this works is you let people come to your garden, and they pick their own produce, whatever that may be, and just create a business from hobbies that you love to do. And I'm going to tell you what, that is one of my hobbies. I love growing fruits and vegetables. Here's a list of homestead business ideas uh, for other products and services uh, for your backyard business. Now, I found this off of farmfitliving.com. That's farmfitliving.com. You'll come up with some great ideas. Okay, first of all, photography. I mean, you got some pretty land out there. Photography. Create a beautiful outdoor studio and use your talent to take pictures. Yeah, let me tell you something, uh, and this is something my friend LaRue Hardinger told me, and this is about taking pictures, especially for women. What you do is you get the camera and angle it high, and so women love their pictures that are taken that way. Free advice. Okay, first of all, photography, and use your plain, beautiful outdoors. You cannot find a green screen that's going to be prettier than what you can have outside. Got to have good lighting, though, okay? 
You need to also let lighting be your friend. Don't have shadows and stuff like that, but you'll learn. Bake yummy items like cookies and cakes and breads to sell. And open a home-based bakery. Yeah, you can do that. Absolutely. Um, also, number 20 right here is offer a how-to type classes on whatever you're passionate about. You'll be surprised how many others are going to share that same drive. Absolutely. Yeah, if you like to make soaps, or you like to make candles, or you like to make jewelry, whatever you like to do. Or if you like to make, you know, beautiful furniture, like buy old things that look like they're just dread to be thrown away, and you want to make something good out of it, you can do that. People will pay to go to classes. And if you don't want to do it that way, you can also barter. Like folks can come to your free class if they give you um, a couple of bushels of corn. I mean, you can make it up. Whatever's good. Okay, let's see. Making crafts or jewelry out of things like feathers. Do you know you can make jewelry out of insects? Yeah. Um, Etc. Scattered around your land, you'll be able to find something beautiful. We've got lots of really pretty rocks and stuff around here, and I've made a lot of jewelry off of the rocks I've found. You can buy a rock tumbler. I found one, like, almost for nothing, a rock tumbler. And... And it makes the, I mean, any ugly rock you find outside is going to make it beautiful. And so think about getting a rock tumbler. It don't cost that much. You can go to eBay, places like that for it as well. Um, do you have extra house or a building? You can turn into living quarters for a bed and breakfast. <laughs> That's another good idea. Um, and then number 23, finally, offer your land as a location for agritourism. We're going to talk about that. There are many people looking for a farm to visit. Just create a business from um, from hobbies that stem from travel and education. Teach others to love and enjoy rural living. Yeah, it's a lot of fun. A lot of folks, you know, I got my my love for rural living when I was a kid. Grew up in town. Grew up in well subdivision in Oxford, Alabama. Chiaw Acres number two, Douglas Drive is where we used to live. And so we would come here to the farm in the summertime when school was out. And my brother and sister and I would come and spend a couple, three weeks here on the farm. And I grew to love it. Absolutely. So your kids may love it. You may do that. You know, uh, also during the um, harvest fall time of the year, a lot of folks have these little, they call them corn mazes. But get the kids used to a corn maze and let them figure out how to walk in from one. Now you stay close by, okay? Especially for smaller kids. And let them go through a corn maze. And they decide they want the farm life. Okay, create a business from hobbies that you love. Why not? If it's something you love doing, you're going to be very successful at it. There's nothing wrong with supporting yourself and your family. The way you want to buy starting a starting up a backyard business, create a business from hobbies that you're already doing. I told you about this guy on television. He worked on High Rise in New York, worked for a financial company, and made a lot of money, but um, was not happy. And, but he was doing a little side business and loved working with wood. So finally his wife came to him and said, you know something, you need to be doing something you like. You're making a lot of money and everything, but you are one miserable person. Well, his health started going bad because he was not happy. So he started his own business um, making furniture, just a little sideline business, and it turned into a great thing because now he has his own TV show. Yeah. Make it easy and choose homestead business ideas that you're passionate about because your new backyard business will be your life. You'll love it and you'll breathe it. If you want to work with furniture, before you know it, people are going to be bringing furniture to you and saying, hey, can you create something pretty with this? You've got yourself a business started. You'll be miserable if you don't love working in your backyard business. So make sure it's something that you absolutely want to do. And this is a list of really good ideas that you want to do. Okay, now I'm going to give you some more ideas and again this is this has been a really good segment right here making money from the land and I would like to hear how you've done it you know what have you done to make your life a whole lot easier by doing something that you're passionate about and how happy are you just because of that okay now I'm going to give you um, something else it's called a list of 23 ideas for a gardener, a gardener, let's say that you have a friend who's actually a gardener, why can't you get a gardener? Oh, there's so many great things. We love tools, by the way. It doesn't matter if it's something small or if it's something big. I love those little tiny, like little tiny shovels. 
I love them. I, I mean, you want to get me something for Christmas? Get me a tool. I love that. So if you're looking for gift ideas for a gardener on your list, whether it's Christmas or Christmas coming up, birthday, or just because, let me tell you what a few things that are that you can do. Um, there's a guide, and so here we go. Let's go on down. Okay, seed starting kits. Now again, you can get this um, all everything I'm talking about on the show today. Farm fit living.com that's farmfitliving.com let me tell you something that really thrills us gardeners seed starting kits <laughs> we love them i mean it's better than any diamond ring because guess what you learn how to make food you learn how to plant a seed and have a huge garden you'll be able to buy your own diamond okay so to make something happen you just got to start right so the gift of giving seed starting and germinating equipment is a very successful gift with seed starting kits a gardener can, and you can make up your own little gift starter kit uh, gardening starting kit a gardener can get a head start on the growing season and start his or her own plants from seed i love doing this there's something so satisfying about planting a seed let's say you plant a tomato seed and think about all the tomatoes that you can get from one plant yeah and oh, by the way sacrifice one of the tomatoes and keep the, the seeds okay you'll always have seeds okay and store them in the freezer that's a good place for them okay here are um, some things that you can do with um, seeds I've, um, this person the author by the way of farmfitliving.com says I've included several interesting and unusual gifts for gardeners that would be interested in trying to grow something new and also something that you know, supplement your income okay number two is a planner or a journal this is an absolute must because you want to remember what worked what didn't work so when I've tried different things like when we started the block garden for instance the concrete block I, I went on ahead and started a journal on that because sometimes you got a great idea but then maybe you just zig when you should have zagged maybe you just made the wrong decision at the wrong time a journal is going to help you learn from those past mistakes and you'll also by the way when you keep a journal it'll give you more ideas as you're writing stuff down it gets that brain activated and so you'll start putting one together and you'll know what to do leave it for a keepsake for your kids and your grandkids and they'll discover what you did to have a successful garden soil management gifts are good and I'll tell you what I mean by that. Successful gardening begins with healthy soil. So testing the properties and the amount of nitrogen um, and the potassium levels in your soil can open up a lot of eyes and answer a lot of questions. So this is what somebody told me about certain colors of flowers. Because you want flowers in your garden as well. It attracts those bees. So did you know sometimes that the color of a flower depends on where you've got it? planted yeah it does it has a lot to do with that um, hydrangeas for instance they can either be purple or they can be pink or they can be a blue color depending on how much nitrogen and potassium is in there so you can get these little kits now that's your uh, do-it-yourself soil kit by the way um, anywhere you live the state of Alabama all of our county seats DeKalb County Marshall County all the counties that are around you're going to be able to find a place that's going to give you some free instruction on what to do. Our go-to person is Brian Brown. He's with the Home Extension Office right here in DeKalb County and in Marshall County as well. And so he has been a huge, huge help to us. So find someone who's in your county because it, it really depends. Like North Alabama, South Alabama, what you plant and raise and successful with in North Alabama may not work in South Alabama. We're almost two different states here because you've got the mountains on the top part where we're at, and then you got the beach and all the water at the at the bottom of the state. So really, the person in your county is the best resource you've got. Um, number four, seeds. Some of the most costly part of gardening is buying the seeds themselves. So seeds like these are a great gift. Given the right seeds, again, based upon values and location is highly important. Absolutely. Okay, a soil temperature gauge is something that's really good too. Planting seeds and plants at the right time really makes a huge, huge difference. It can solve so many disease and stress problems. So given the gift of knowing what the soil temperature is, is something else that's really good. 
attire for garden lovers. Okay, you may have to put something old on and I'm done, but you got to have gloves. So maybe the gardener needs a new coffee mug or a t-shirt. There's all kinds of things you can do. Coffee mugs, um, and I'll tell you something else you can do. A gardener, if you don't have a greenhouse, why not use your own house as a greenhouse? I, I'm not talking about every room in the house. There are these little small portable ones that you can get and put them next to a window. Now make sure it's a south facing, okay, where you put it, south facing window. And that's where most of the sun's going to be coming in in the summertime. And, and also in the, the end of the winter time when you need to start germinating those seeds. Um, another thing you can do is just save those old, you know, when you eat out, go to a Chinese restaurant or whatever. I go to the Cattle Stampede Steakhouse. I can never eat all the food they put on the plate. So I'm always asking for it to go. Sometimes they'll put a clear cover over the plastic bottom. Those are great little mini greenhouses. You can start so many seeds that way. I mean, it's, it's a great idea. So many great things that you can do. Or just use plastic wrap. Yeah, you can do that as well. See, what this does is creates humidity. And that helps those seeds to grow. Don't keep them too moist, by the way. Gotta be moist, but not too moist. Because too much water can kill them. Just like not keeping them watered can kill them. Okay, number seven. Garden tool organizer. Oh, yeah, this is, this is really important. Never lose a necessary garden tool. Again, stay organized with this tool organizer. It's uh, There's one that's got adjustable peg locations, kind of like those peg boards that you can get. I have them in my studio. And it's designed to keep all your garden tools handy within reach and stored safe. I'll tell you something else gardeners love are aprons. But now we like the kind that, that kind of ties around the neck. So you've got little places, little pockets that you can have on the top part of it and then pockets on the bottom. You can't have too many pockets if you're a gardener. So that would be an awesome, awesome gift right there to a gardener friend. Number eight, watering systems and management. Managing the moisture content of the garden is one of those tasks that gardeners need to be able to do successfully. So there are some ways and some gauges you can use. There's one that's called a three-in-one moisture tester. It measures the moist content, moisture content of the soil to let you know when to water. It also helps to control the pH level. That's really important in the soil to make sure the plants are in the right soil environment. And this is like one of the best things you can give a plant lover. The next item is a rain gauge. Be able to get an accurate reading up to five inches. Okay, that's that's real important. The numbers are magnified by over 35 cent percent so that you can see them better. Next is a sprinkler system that can be used from watering root crops and flowers. And then also a drip irrigation system kit. And this is real important. But let me tell you something. You can do it yourself. Okay, so if you drank a lot of bottled water, um, if you have drank a lot of colas and it's in plastic bottles, I'm going to show you how to do it for free. First of all, you'll need to take the top off of okay, you know, the lid. Take the lid off. Turn it upside down, okay, and then what you'll need to do is cut off the bottom. Now leave as much open as you possibly can because you need this thing to be able, it's, it's, it's like a filter, it's a funnel. And then you'll put it down into the ground next to your plant. Don't put it right in it, you could cause some injury to the, injury to the, the stem that's growing. But this is your own, and it's, it's free. Your, your recycling is what you're doing. You know, we talked about recycling in the last show. This is your ultimate recycling. Again, take the lid off, and then what you'll do is keep put, put the funnel down into the ground. you got to have the, the top cut off. And then as it rains or as you're watering, you're not wasting any money because water is going into that, and you've got it as close to the root as you can, okay, so that you'll be able to keep those roots watered. Yeah, you'll have a very successful garden. Now, a lot of folks do container gardens. You can do the same thing. Just use those little water bottles. Again, take the lid off, cut the bottom part off, put water in it, and you've got your own filtration system that didn't cost you anything, something you would normally just throw away. So that's something you can do for yourself and for friends. If you've got gardeners who are friends, call them and ask them if they'd like for you to save bottles for them. I'm sure they'll say yes.
Um, for the year-round gardener, seasonal extension systems come in all sizes and shapes. So there are some greenhouses that you can purchase. By the way, you can get a really good greenhouse. Just make sure you got it stabilized really well. Um, because um, what Phil did is he got um, um, some tools that actually he put into the ground and he put cement on that so that's helped my because we got some winds I mean winter's going to be here before you know it just make sure you get it stabilized into the ground really well and we have tornadoes around here too high winds okay a mini greenhouse is really awesome get those for about 50 bucks a strong and durable frame built with heavy duty metal it's uh, ideal for limited space and it comes with three tiers and what better way to get your seeds started Okay, um, classic metal garden labels. Oh, we love those. Oh, yeah, absolutely. And you can use a Sharpie pen, and it's going to stay on there throughout every season. And that's real good because sometimes, like, we had this little fiasco that happened. Um, we had some high winds that came in, and I told Phyllis, I'm afraid that the greenhouse could fall in and you know, I've got all my seeds and everything planted so we rushed everything and put them in put everything into the garage and put our lamps heat lamps and everything out in the garage well here's what happened rats got in and knocked everything down well guess what I had to remember which was what what was which which tomato which was the Roma which is the you know yellow tomatoes you know the beefsteak tomatoes I didn't know which ones because the rats made such a mess out there if you've got those little garden labels that you can put on, that saves, that saves a lot of headaches right there. And in case something like that happens again, you got the label. Uh, a kitchen composter. Um, this is uh, an easy way to manage your compost and keep it, you just keep one in the kitchen. Um, Amazon sells those on there too, and they have a airtight lid and activated charcoal filter. Yeah, it's compact and it's simple to use and clean. It's very durable. And if you're interested in composting and becoming eco-friendly, then you got to check it out. That could make a really good, a really good gift. But let me tell you something else you can do. If you have a food processor or a blender, just get all those old potato peels and tomato peelings and you know, all those things and cut them up and just put them in there and you know kind of use the chopping method and then just throw it out in your compost pile. That's an easy way to do it, too. Okay, row cover for weather protection and insect control. Those are um, called floating row covers, and they're designed to protect your plants from winter and insects during the peak of their life. And it also allows some frost protection as well as UV protection. Um, we're going to have some frost tonight, so you've got to get those things ready. Installation is really easy. Now, for weed control, um, there's a black plastic that you can buy at all your garden centers. They all have them. And I'll tell you what, that saves a gardener a lot of time. Um, that's why I had such a big garden this year. Um, trying to fit a gardening business, a family, a home, and a farm. Who has time to weed? That's true. Black plastic does the trick, and it's also great to use that as a drip irrigation system as well. Let's do, we've got time for one more. Pocket pruner multi-tool. We love those. It's a great gift for a gardener dad, and it's a little pocket pruner, and it works well for pruning plants and shrubs, and also a gardener seat. We love those as well. And also those little pads that you can put your knees down on, those are wonderful as well. I hope you've enjoyed watching today's segment. And again, we're really happy that you watched Make Money from the Land, this particular segment. And then also we're going to have another segment um, on how to just grow your fruits and vegetables. Again, thank you so much for watching Afternoon Drive Home. My name is Donna Fiesel, and I'm your host. No, you could be doing anything, but you're watching us right now. And we definitely appreciate that. And welcome to the farm. See you again coming up at the next segment with another us awesome idea on gardening.